Blog Talk Radio. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We just finished Denver, Colorado. Kim Blylove and Cone had Karen Oser on there, a great author out of uh, South Carolina. And now we end up in Cleveland, Ohio. Forget the Browns, the Cavaliers, and the Guardians for 30 minutes. It's the American Sports History Podcast. Uh, produced by yours truly, Mark Mancini, hosted by my good brother, friend, and mentor, Peter Ray, 347-205-9631. You can catch this archive version on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports. Podcast platforms wherever you subscribe to, powered now by Mancini Media. More of him, less of me. Let me lay that red carpet down, put the podium in its place, hand off the mic. First of all, Peter, how are you? Second of all, how can people get a hold of you? Third of all, I think everybody looks forward to this every two weeks when you get this great guest on in your uh, home city, my friend. Hi, Mark. I'm doing well. I have a YouTube channel. uh, The name is my name, Peter J. Ray, R-E-A. Uh, pe- people can send me a Facebook friend request on Facebook. My name it's Peter Ray R E A. I my email is pistol Pete Ray R E A at yahoo dot com. People can call me at my home four four zero three three one three eight five three. And you're right for for the eleventh time we have a former NBA player from nineteen eighty to nineteen ninety five with the Seattle SuperSonics. San Diego Clippers, L.A. Clippers, Dallas Mavs, New York Knicks, and Utah Jazz, the author of two books, Standing Above the Crowd, Execute Your Game Plan to Become the Best You Can Be, came out in 2011, and Celebrating Your Gift of Life from the Verge of Suicide to a Life of Purpose and Joy. Uh, Welcome to the show for the the 11th time, Mr. James Donaldson. Hey there, Peter Ray. All right. How are you doing today? And 11 times, but hey. Who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, Mr. Donaldson also has a podcast Saturday on the Mark Man City Network, Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Pacific time. It's, I've listened to all three of the wonderful interviews with Lenny Wilkins, uh, your uh, your coach with Seattle and the NBA, and George Raveling, your college coach, and then you had Ruben Mays, your college coach. Uh, uh, t- uh, classmate and uh, sports uh, uh, athlete uh, root, uh, this Saturday, so th- that's wonderful. Your 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 uh, podcast on Saturday mornings. Yeah, I've been having a great time with that, and uh, and the guests have been just wonderful. These are people that I've known for years, uh, and then of course I'll reach out further and further into my 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 database of people I know. Uh, this weekend, to wrap up the Winter Olympics in Beijing, I have an Olympic athlete coming on board, uh, played in the Summer Olympics, uh, Ruthie Bolton, two-time Olympic gold champion, gold medalist in basketball, women's basketball. So she'll talk about her Olympic experience, and uh, we'll have a great time talking about what the IOC is all about and trying to stay out of the nasty game of politics, but, uh, you know, that's part of our, our our mix of things that we have to deal with. So, But the games have been great, the Winter Olympics so far, and I want to get Ruthie's take on all of that and then give her experience on being in the Summer Olympics as well. Yeah, that's wonderful. I've been uh, – I haven't loved your first three shows. I mean, I the thing is you uh, – it's it's wonderful to hear about their lives of these people and and your friendship. I'm very impressed. It's always be- wonderful seeing friends. That's because you know there's mutual respect you see uh, between you and these people. And so it's yeah. I, I, and I knew I knew Lenny Wilkins pretty well, but not so much these. I, I didn't know uh, George Raveling and Reuben May. So it's wonderful to learn about them. And I I, I just love yeah. the show. So I'll be definitely listen to your show. Uh, coming Saturday, yeah. we got a, we have a comment from Danny from Warren, Ohio. He says, "Hi, fellas. This is simply the best. Peter and James tearing up Cleveland every two weeks." <laughs> Thank you so much, Danny. You know, and, and and you're right, Peter. I mean, you know, we talk about things that really matter in life. Sports is important, but it shouldn't be the most important thing going on in our lives. And plus, if you want team standings and statistics and all those kind of things. You can easily find that on the Internet, but it's so great to be able to talk about, you know, what makes the person and what made them excel at sports and, more importantly, after the game of sports and in life. So that's what we, that's what you and I are all about as well, too. 
That's right. Sal from Germantown, Pennsylvania uh, says, Hi, you double do, do a great show on Saturday, James. And he says he thinks I'm a good moderator. Well, thanks. Yeah, you, you are. You, you're very easy to work with, Peter. You just kind of lay it out there for me. Uh, you know, just soft soft little pitch over the plate, and I just knock it out of the park. So that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> nice baseball <laughs> metaphor. Uh, Denise that's from right. San Francisco. Denise from San Francisco, California, a show that's about life. You two sure know how to bring it. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, Denise. Yeah, wonderful. And tell your friends we want to keep on doing this stuff and just keep keep it growing. So that's good. Yeah, I'm glad I found out about your other book here uh, because I thought, well, we get through this your second book, we can go through the first. So that'll be wonderful. Of course, I, there's also other th- ways to research your life on the internet. Now the uh, I'm, now, from your book, Celebrating Your Gift of Life, you got this From the Verge of Suicide to a Life of Purpose and Joy. Uh, this chapter 8 is, to me, the best chapter. God is so real to me. I don't want to get overly preachy in this book, but I will say that whatever your convictions, spiritual beliefs, or religious tendencies, I'm a lifelong Christian Baptist. There comes a point in everyone's life when we become convinced there has to be a higher power out there somewhere. When I was in the depths of my despair, feeling alone and absolutely without any hope for tomorrow, I knew one thing for sure. God was right there with me. God was there when I would cry out in the middle of the night and couldn't get back to sleep. God was there to give me enough strength for one more day. God loved me, even when I didn't love myself, and helped me to find a purpose. I just knew God was there with me, holding my hand and steadying me. If I had been holding God's hand, I surely would have let go a long time ago. Instead, God was holding mine. Any comment, mm-hmm. Mr. Donaldson? I mean, it's so apropos, you know, and uh, I, I just hope that everybody out there has has somebody or something they can believe in that's a greater power than they are. You know, we call him, we call him God, we call him Lord, Savior, we call him, you know, uh, Muhammad or Buddha, what have you. There's all kind of things out there that people can really, I, I think, you know, kind of submerge their own ego and realize that they are not always in control. Uh, life is going to be what life is going to be. And it's up to us to determine how we're going to respond to that. And it helps so much when in those those early morning hours when you're all by yourself and nobody's with you but that little voice in your head that you can reach out to a higher power, and my higher power is God. Uh, and I, like I said, I've been a lifelong Christian, still go to church every single Sunday, and just constantly give credit and 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 all the all the credit in the world to Lord God, my Savior. So I hope everybody else out there can follow suit as well. Mitchell from Dearborn, Michigan. More shows like this, not the same regurgitation. You guys care about the listeners. That's the key. Yeah, that's the thing. We all need to care about each other. That's a wonderful point, uh, Mitchell. C- caring, we need to care. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, especially going through what we're going through now. I mean, you, you see the trucker strike up in Canada, you know, and I care about those truckers. I mean, they're being driven to desperate men to bring attention to the plight that they're all under. Uh, forcing the Canadian government to pay attention. And it's unfortunate that we have to do that as as citizens and civilians from time to time, but we have to care about each other, and our government has to care about us as well. This is what we elect them for, to represent us. Uh, So hopefully there's a win-win in all this, and the heavy hand of the Canadian government doesn't continue to come down and crush these people and put them out of their livelihood, put them out of their, their trucking industry. No, that's not right. You know, these people really deserve to be heard, and I hope they're going to be heard fairly. Albert from Poway, California. You listened to the George Raveling interview, just awesome. That's a great interview. God gave you another chance. Cash it in, James. Yes, yes. You know, George was one of the most instrumental of my small group of people I pulled together. There was George, there was Lenny Wilkins, and several others. But George, he took me back to my high school days when I was 16, 17 years old, and he was starting to recruit me out of Sacramento to go to Washington State University. He reminded me, he said, James, I've I've been with you since high school. You put 40 years plus into making you the person that you've become. 
a business person, an athlete, a community person. I'm not going to let you throw all that away. And those words just resonated with me over and over and over. He's not going to let me throw it away. And I, if nothing else, I didn't want to disappoint George Raveling, let alone disappoint myself. And so I wasn't going to throw it away at that point. Uh, and he reminded me that his big break came when he was 64 years of age. And back then I was just, just turning 60. He said, James, you've just begun to live. Your big break is still ahead of you. Mine didn't come until I was 64. After, after 35 years of coaching, he became a global marketing management executive for Nike. Uh, and that was a big, big thing he's done for the last 20 years. And so I believe now my better days are ahead, even though I've done the basketball, I've done the sports, I've done the politics, I've done the community stuff. My better days are ahead, and I really believe that with all I have. Yeah, he cared about you. And, you know, it's funny, we go through our daily life and we have encounters with people, and you can tell uh, often people, they don't they don't care, and it's like, oh, it's kind of uh, – and, and, and then so when someone really does care, it's like it makes an impression, and you think, wow, really? Somebody cares about me? <laughs> so, yeah. And that yeah. shows the power of, of caring. You know, we tend to we don't, wow. we, we don't understand how powerful it is. Well, and he gave me a dose of, of tough love also. Uh, he didn't want me to sit around feeling sorry for myself. Uh, you know, he, he sent me a little bit of money to help me with my, my, my rent payment one time, my mortgage payment. And he said, James, I'm not going to do this over and over. You better not be sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. Pick yourself up. Keep yourself going. Things will get better. And those were the words from George Ravley that I still carry with me to these days. Aaron from Duarte, California, says we got a mayor in Garcetti telling us to wear masks, yet three times he was seen not wearing them. Wow, what a world. Thank God I can listen to you every two weeks about being positive, caring, and listening. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Garcetti is holding his breath from what I hear. Every time he's without a mask, he's holding his breath. So he must he must have the Guinness Book of World Records for breath holding because he was at the <laughs> Super Bowl without a mask. <laughs> Uh, back to your book, uh, Celebrating Your Gift of Life. When I went through my emergency open-heart surgery in 2015, God brought me through with a renewed sense of compassion and love for all humanity. When I went through my mental challenges in 27, 2018, God brought me through with a renewed sense of empathy for everyone, mm -hmm. no, no matter their station. I will never again minimalize what someone else might be going through. I get it now. I came out of this mental health challenge with a sense of why I was still here, to help others undergoing mental health challenges and to help with suicide prevention. After what I've been through, I have a story to tell, and I also want to share my strategy, how I made it through and how you can make it through as well. Yes. You know, and, and this is the power. I mean, I write about it, um, the power of how God works. After that emergency open-heart surgery 2015, I was hovering between life and death for several, several days, if not a couple of weeks. The doctors didn't know if I was going to make it through. During that time, I had this premonition of me looking at one of those big coffee table picture books and God looking at me from overhead. And I was turning the pages of this big picture book and all these great photos from my life previously, all my friends, my family, my, my accomplishments. And I kept turning the page, and I turned the page again, and it was totally black. So there was nothing on that page. And I knew at that point that I was going to die. And I heard God's voice. He said, James, have faith. Turn the other page. And I mustered up my strength to turn the page again. And it, too, was black. And now I'm starting to argue with God. I'm like, God, I'm only 57 years old. I've done all the right things. I've taken care of myself. Why am I going to die now? And I heard his voice one more time to the point where he's chastising me. James, you silly fool, turn, have faith and turn the other page. And I turned it one more time. And the, the pictures on the page started coming to life again. Very faint at first, but then they became more and more vivid, more and more colorful. 
And I knew at that point I was going to be okay. I was going to make it through. And I was going to be back on my feet again with God's help. But he was testing me. If I didn't turn the page, Peter, I know for certain I would not be here. I turned the page because I had faith in God, and it worked out. Wow, that's that's really something. What a, what a beautiful story. Harry from Sausalito, California, says, James, he loves your show on Saturdays. Peter, Peter and you are something every two weeks. Wow, he could listen to you five days a week in my city. Maybe that's why I keep hearing your shows and downloading them. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. You know, we're starting out small. You know, I don't know what the listening audience is out there. I've got a couple of thousand folks on my email list. I blast it out to and throw it all over social media and try to just get as much attention as we can. Uh, this will be our fourth show this coming Saturday. Uh, let's take a look and see where we are three or four or five months from now. And hopefully we can start making, you know, uh, some kind of dent in the market marketplace for this kind of talk show. Uh, the long range format of interviewing where 30 minutes is given to the guest and to the host. And it doesn't have to be fast and rapid paced. Uh, you know, it's, it's paced slow enough where they can actually tell their story. Great stories from Lenny Wilkins, from Reuben Mays, from George Raveling of their upbringing, of some of the things they've gone through. George was talking about his, his work in the civil rights and working with Martin Luther King Jr. And having the original copy of the I Have a Dream speech that Martin Luther King Jr. gave him while George was being the bodyguard up on the, up on the podium the day of the March on Washington. Great, great stories that people don't know about, but it's so great to hear these things directly from the people. That, well, talk about history, uh, you know, American history. You know, I'm doing, I've been making videos on the life of Abraham Lincoln, and it, we're getting near the end. And I have, a, I'm going to have Martin Luther King's speech because he he references Lincoln basically, and you know, the Declaration of Independence. And here, this uh, what a moment in America. And, and George Raveling was there. Wow, and played a yeah. <laughs> played an important. Wow, that's such a incredible. You know, talk about that's wow, that really hit me. My God! Yeah. Look at this. Oh yeah, and it's 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 safely tucked away. I think he mentioned it's over at Villanova University right now. His alma mater. Uh, the speech is all enclosed in the, to a display case, and then it's going to the African American Museum over in Washington D.C. Uh, after its stay at Villanova University. So it's going to be part of our history forevermore. Mark Mancini. Mark Mancini, our fearless leader, says God is blazing a trail with this, and he loves the show. Mark Mancini. Yeah, I do, too. <laughs> I look forward to it, Peter. I, 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 you know, you, you, you tease me about this is number 11 and counting. I, I hope we never stop. So let's keep on going. <laughs> no, I have no plans. And, I'm, you know, we had a mutual understanding. I didn't want to assume, you know, you, you, know, you would come every two. But I was, you know, I guess then we finally realized we were both committed. So I, I was delighted because it's, uh, it's just tremendous. Uh, now back to your book, uh, uh, Celebrating Your Gift of Life. Take time now to pray to God or whatever you choose to call your higher power to help you through your difficulties. If you are not used to praying, you can say the prayer below to help you get started. Dear God, I am at the end of my rope. I need help. I am without hope. You are my last hope. Please help me to feel hope again. Help me to know you are with me through this, and even if it doesn't get better today or tomorrow, it will get better eventually, and you will be with me until the end. Help me to believe that a brighter day lies ahead. Help me to become excited about that amazing day in my future when you will reveal this situation has all been part of your plan for me to help me become stronger and better able to serve others. Amen. Yeah. Commit to saying this prayer or your own prayer every morning, evening, and as often as you need to. That, that little prayer is so applicable to everybody in this world. Man, woman, boy, and girl. It doesn't matter where what your background is, what your culture is, if you can have that little prayer to say to God, to help you out of that tough spot that you're in, uh, he will He will respond, believe me, and make things better. I look at my life now, and it's, it's so much more rich and bountiful than it used to be when I had tons of material things. You know, I had the house. I had the 
the money in the bank. I had, you know, everything mapped out. I had a business. Um, I lost all that. But this life now is so much more rewarding and so much more rich that I don't want to trade it for anything. I, I would never go back to all the all the material trappings I used to have because this life now is so much more valued. Captain Jet is saying hi in New York. Hi, Captain Jet. Captain Jet makes these uh, NFL helmets for different for fans, and he's a big mm-hmm. New York Jets fan. Really wonderful guy. Hi, hi. Have you heard of Captain Jet, Jet Mr. Donaldson? I, I haven't, but I'll pray for him and the Jets to get a little bit better. I mean, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what we always have the Jets? memory of dream of of. Uh, <laughs> Of Joe Namath, one of the coolest players in the NFL history, for sure. I mean, he's very re- real. That's what the great thing about memory, and as you get older, yeah, Joe Namath. Talk about it. We'll, we'll win, yes. I guarantee it, and they did. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If they need another Joe Namath to come along and guarantee they'll win, and they'll be winning again. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you know, you uh, back to your talk, you know, this uh, topic about God, you know, there are people who have had problems maybe with uh, their religion growing up, and so they think, and, you know, this has been a problem with the hypocrisy among religious leaders of all religions, really, who give God a bad name, and, uh, you know, we can call God father, mother, friend, and, and the thing is, and I know, you know, God, I think he's He's very, very powerful, but he's very subtle and, and shy, and uh, and he loves us, but he kind of uh, wants us to, you know, he wants us to make so- He's not going to force himself on us, but I know oh, this, my life, uh, he's helped me, and I know he's real. And, you know, and every time I go through a hard times, I, I often, you know, we tend to give the world everything, you know, and then the world is a troubled place, and then we become troubled. So we have to give, I just was thinking about this recently for myself, because it's so easy to get so busy in a million things and then give God very little time or no time. And then we have to, we have to give God time in prayer. And, and meditation and spiritual study and then and see I want yeah. I, we're getting I want to I don't want to be overwhelmed by the by the challenges of life I want to have the strength to deal with challenging situations and I know it comes from uh, God contact from prayer I'm tired of having yeah. being overwhelmed by situations and you know losing my temper or being scared or devastated and I know God gives us strength and peace so we can be patient and and know okay. what what to do in tough situations well, you know, my thought is people who don't really know God personally, uh, they look at church and they look at religion, and those are all man-made institutions that are going to be having every flaw that man has. And we can't put our faith in, in our trust into institutions. We put our faith and trust into God. Uh, God is a, a spiritual being, a higher being. And he will be there no matter what. He'll never fail us. He'll never leave us alone. And we just have to remember that, you know, I just moved from Seattle to a smaller town outside of Seattle, about 90 minutes out. And when I got here, I wanted to find a new church home. I had been at my previous church home for 35 years in Seattle. And I, I went to a different church every single weekend for 15 weeks in a row before I finally found one that suited me, that resonated with me. I tried the different denominations, the different styles of preaching. And I said, wow, I'll find it one day. But I just kept going religiously every single Sunday to a different church. And I finally found a new church home here. That's what we have to do. Don't look at the church and look at the people up in the pulpit as the all in all. You know, they're, they're not. They're just people. Uh, but find a church that resonates with you, and God will speak to you through that church and speak directly to you. I agree completely. The uh, my church is Self Realization Fellowship, and I but I love meeting people. And I, I know it's for me. I'm, I'm not going to say it's for everybody. I love meeting Mormons, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Jehovah Witnesses, or what? My wife's a Catholic Christian. It's very and that that's for her and. Uh, so I always mm-hmm. tell people, find what works for you. Find whatever, and, and I, I, I don't know what it is for other people, but find something, and then you'll you can get the help you need, and you can have yep. a happy. God wants. I know He wants us to be happy. He doesn't That's want right. us because He loves us. You know, you know, He doesn't want people to be miserable. So, so anyway, you can. Uh, 
And, I, you know, you talked about uh, reaching out to friends and so, when you had depression, which is we do need to. That's part of life. And we do need, but the thing about God is, you know, when we're in, he's with us any time. You can't call your friends all the time, you know, and you're going to have yeah. different. So that's I, I get up now like 3.34 in the morning for work, and I get up, oh, so I think, all right, that's it. All right, God, here we go. Let's go here. Yeah. And uh, and so and that it brings up. Uh, peace and joy to me in, in whatever uh, challenge I'm facing. Yes, yes. And, and God is ever-loving and all-knowing uh, power. And so he tells us, come as you are. He doesn't care what you're going through through life, what you have, what you've accomplished, what you haven't accomplished. He says, come as you are, uh, but don't stay as you were. You know, he wants you to change, to grow your faith and your love in him. So that you can serve him and be a rep- better representation of him, uh, you know. And I know we're getting a little bit into all the religion preachy stuff, uh, Peter. But and I hope our I hope our audience doesn't mind that. But you know, this is something that's very important to both of us. We have a strong conviction and a strong faith in our Lord. You know, uh, we t- in uh, American Christianity we tend to think of God as a father, and then you have people who had problems with their fathers, and then that's so they think, oh, they don't. Uh, the thing is, uh, well, I, I don't have that problem. I had a very good father, but the in our church we're taught you can think of God as a mother because mothers really are generally more loving, and so and that's actually what I do. I talk to God yeah. as a mother, and so that's something you can do. Anybody out there who's having problems with thinking of God as a father. Or you can think of him as a friend. Yeah. He's your friend. So you don't have to even use the word God if that's a problem for you. You can have another. That's right. You know, he, and he is our best friend, you know, who is yes. always. Yes. So you can think. And we, we all know friendship, right? We all, we've all had friends who were very important to us. So that's another problem. And he'll, he'll never leave us or forsake us. And that's something we have to just keep in mind. He'll be there. Now, the NBA top 50 players you play with, the Carl Malo- Carl Malone. Mm. Yeah, Carl is one of my favorite all-time teammates. I played with him for two years with the Utah Jazz to wrap up my NBA career. And, you know, when I got cut uh, my last year, um, the Jazz made it to the playoffs, matter of fact. I think they played against the Chicago Bulls in the NBA Finals 1996. Uh, I was cut earlier in the season before the, before the playoffs rolled around. And I was distraught. I mean, I here was my career. I I knew I was a little bit long in the tooth. I knew I couldn't do the things I used to do. I was 36 years old, and so that's old for an athlete, old for anybody uh, in that in that in that career. Carl Malone took it upon himself to drive me to the airport, just him and I together. Uh, he just befriended me. He saw that I was really hurt. I was distraught. I was lost a little bit. And just being with him for the hour drive to the airport and him reassuring me that everything was going to be okay. Uh, he's still a terrific friend and a teammate, but a terrific friend to this day. And that was 25 years ago. So, Carl Malone, my, my hat's off to you. One of the hardest working guys I've ever been around. He'd be in the weight room before practice, after practice. He'd be running wind sprints up and down the floor. Uh, he he really blazed the trail and showed us how how to work hard, and he expected that from all of his teammates, and I did the same thing with him. That's a really good story because you know the fans really want to know about play uh, star players, especially who are good people. And here you had this yeah. personal firsthand knowledge of that, and so that's that's just a wonderful because everyone knows Carl Malone, but then the fact that he was so kind to you at that during yeah. that that time that that's a really good story, wonderful. Yeah, well, I, I'll get him on as a guest one day on my podcast, so keep an eye open for Carl coming on board. Yeah, that's uh, you know even though they didn't win the finals. Uh, uh, I mean the Utah Jazz with John Stockton and the, they're still a memorable team. And you know they, we have to forget about these ideas of oh it's either you win the championship or nothing. You know they, you have to and they're a very memorable team. Malone and Stockton and the rest of the guys on the Jazz who faced the Bulls a couple times and in the finals. Yes. Well, and the list is almost endless of guys who played a great career but never won the championship in almost any sport. But basketball, I mean, the names just rattle off my tongue. I know we're running out of time here, but 
you, I know dozens of guys who I played with who never won the championship, but they were some of the greatest all-time players ever. Yeah, and they deserve respect. They really do. Uh, we've uh, mm-hmm. we're, uh, we've run out of time. Uh, the uh, boy, time has flown by. Uh, Mr. Uh, James Donaldson is our guest, NBA player from 1980 Thanks. to 1995, author of the book Celebrating Your Gift of Life, From the Verge of Suicide to a Life of Purpose and Joy. Uh, Mr. Donaldson, can you, uh, do you have any final words? Can you tell us about your current work in the mental health field? Well, you know, I just got appointed to the new county I'm in. I'm in Kitty Pass County. Uh, as a Board of Health member uh, from the community. So that was last week's appointment. And I'm looking forward to working with public health and and mental health especially. Uh, All you listeners out there, I'd love to get you an autographed signed copy of my book at celebratingyourgiftoflife.com. Just go right there, and I'll fulfill the order for you and put a nice little note in there for you. So I thank you so much, Peter, and look forward to doing it again in a couple weeks. Yeah, that's uh, wonderful having Mr. James Donaldson on the show again. And and, uh, we'll be back with him two weeks from tonight. Uh, That's Tuesday, March 1st. Next week we have Sam McDowell again for the second time, former MLB star in the 1960s and 1970s. Dear listener, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Good night, everybody. Thanks again, Mr. James Donaldson. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.